welcome in the Admiral Bill Stubblefield is one of our main co-hosts today. Billy. Good morning, Rob. Great to be here on this warmish day, the hottish day, the very warmish day, this day. And the final full day of spring. Final full day of spring. <laughs> Summer begins, I think, at 4.51 tomorrow. I think so. Although it felt like it began over the weekend. Let's uh, say good morning to Mark Cram, former news director good, here at WRN. Good morning. I appreciate the invitation, Rob. I, I wasn't going to come. Then you said you had air conditioning. I'm like, okay, I'm yes. there. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have AC at the house? <laughs> Well, yeah, we do, but oh, you know, yeah. yeah. We well, you know we probably all grew up without air conditioning. Oh yeah, right? for sure. Yeah, yeah, I was you know older when I first experienced air conditioning at home. Yeah, so. the first time I lived in a place that had AC, not counting like visiting like my aunt's house or whatever, was when I went away to school. That's okay. the first time I was ever in a bedroom that had air conditioning. Yeah. It was welcome, by the way. I was raised in a small country town that depended upon uh, our row crops that we had to harvest in the fall. That meant we started school right after the 4th of July in rooms that were not air conditioned, Oof. no fans, and we were trying to write without our keeping our arms off the pa piece of paper because it becomes so sweaty you cannot write on the paper. Um, that paints a real sweet picture this early morning, yeah, Bill. Yeah, well, it, it was something that all of us did and didn't think anything of it. But it was uh, today, it would look, we'd think twice. Do we want to go to school at, uh, the 7th, 8th of July and then hit the heat of the midday summer? I just want to uh, make a note uh, by now, you've probably heard that Willie Mays passed away. And for uh, those of us in this room, we yes. probably all got a chance to see him play because. Uh, he was ending his career as we were still uh, fairly young baseball fans. And, and Bill, uh, he would have been in the major leagues when you were probably about seven, eight years old when he started his exactly career. Exactly right, yes. Right? Just about right, yes. Uh, and then that famous catch you made yeah. is, uh, that's over the head, and it's there's I don't think it's ever been replicated. I read a book about him when I was a little kid, like in first grade or whatever, and it talked about the beginning of his career when he got called up to the Giants. And he, I think, went one for 21, his first 21 at-bats. I think he had one hit. And he was looking all dejected. And uh, his, I think his manager was Leo DeRocher. And he, he yeah. said to him, I, I don't I, I deserve to be here. And he said, young man, don't worry about it. You're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And he went on and, of course, had a, an obvious Hall of Fame career yeah. and lost a couple years of his major league time due to the Korean War. I, this is something I didn't know. He, oh, wow. he served, he served uh, in Korea. I did, I'd forgotten that. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know it until I heard yeah. – the, some of the wrap-ups about his life and his career, and as great as his numbers were, similar to Ted Williams and a lot of other players of that generation, they lost some years to wartime. Say hey, Willie. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Our guest in this segment is Heidi Crawford. She was victorious in her quest to become a council person in Martinsburg as she was running at large, and you needed to finish in the top two of the four who ran, and she did. Heidi, good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. What was it like going through this for the first time? It was not a lot of fun. <laughs> 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 I want to be honest. <laughs> there was some negativity that I did not love, um, but uh, but I'm glad it's over, and I'm glad it turned out exactly like it did, so I'm well, pleased. For people who run for office on a regular basis, they grow accustomed to it. They may not like it, but they go grow accustomed to negativity or critique some of which is warranted right. there's a difference between critiquing a person on their views and there's another one just a different world of making stuff up about people right. what's it like for a person who's running for the first time to try to read some of that stuff and then have to live with it I realize just how thin my skin is, and I need to thicken it up a little bit, apparently. Um, but it's just difficult not to respond. And I had some great friends who advised me to just take the high road, run my campaign. And I did that, and I was glad I did. I was, I was really glad that I listened to that advice and just ignore the, the negativity. But, but it's hard to look at and mm -hmm. know that it's untruths, and, but, but it's over. It's over, and I'm glad. So, and you and you move on. Yes, move right. on. So, uh, I guess in some of those posts, you were accused of some nefarious possibilities yes. going forward with some yes. property that you own and how you might use it. Can you address Correct. whether or not you have intentions of profiting from the properties that you own as a council person? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, the city and my uh, the property we own has there's no no. Um, 
nothing combined there's no events that are going to be happening at city hall at uh for city hall at aspen hall um so yeah there's no there's nothing gonna change any idea where any of that started no clue no clue well now that you've won when does your first day of business begin uh we are sworn in on the 27th of june so next thursday so after that i guess the first council meeting would be the july meeting is there a city council boot camp a, a refresher course of some sort that you go to i have set myself up in my own boot camp per se i have met with the mayor i've met with the city manager i've met with um i've talked a lot with um shane farthing i uh, had lunch yesterday with Corey roman because i am filling some big shoes i feel like uh basically with him taking leaving. his seat yeah. yeah absolutely and he's he's done a good job and i um i respect him he's so young and done you know such a great job mm -hmm. so yeah i had lunch with him yesterday to, to kind of chat about some advice on what he feels like i could do to to, to do, make sure i do a good job in this in this position so as an at-large council person how do you address attending to your constituents needs when you as an at-large would have five wards basically the, the five council people who represent one ward represent their right, ward right granted they all have an overview of the city that they want the best for but they they specifically represent a ward how do you address your constituents that way well i i think i just have to listen to them and i'm going to learn that as i go um and I, th I think that's a big part of it is just listening and seeing what people need because i really don't know i know what i have my own concerns with as a resident of the city and a business owner um, but i don't know the needs of everybody until until they bring them to us so um, just do the best we can to make everybody happy and do what's best for the city. William. Yeah, uh, good morning, Heidi. Good morning. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. 6.4% uh, turned out to vote, an abysmally low turnout. Some folks have contributed that or attributed that to uh, uh, the fact it's a standalone election. And there's been talk in years past about moving it up and having part of the county election cycle. Would you be in favor of that? Or Absolutely. You would be in favor, yeah. Yes, I think it's going to be difficult talking to the people that uh, manage the, the elections. I think that would be hard making sure that the precincts, you know, between the wards and the precincts, that would be difficult to get the ballots correct. No, um, it should not be at all. Well, I, hopefully. Yeah, I don't think that'd be a problem. I know there was a levy that yeah. didn't make it on one of the ballots yeah. at one point, and I think that was a concern. But, um, but yeah, I think yeah. it would be a great thing. Okay, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Going back to, to the negativity, uh, generally we think of negative campaigns, one person against their opponent. Uh, so the negativity would be within just between two people or right. uh, two opponents. Was that the case in your race? No, no, it definitely was not. Yeah. Um, uh, you were running for at-large. Right, none of the yeah. at-large. I don't think anybody in the city council had any negative yeah. things at all. No, not at all. And but, on behalf of the at-large council candidates, of which there were four, they yeah. all agreed if we were going to do a candidate forum slash debate, they all agreed to participate yes. in it, yes. by the way. I would say in full credit to them. Right. Yeah, and the reason I ask the question is know all, knowing all four of them, and I don't think any of them will resort, no. resort to negativity in no, the race. So. definitely not. I agree. Mr. Cram. Well, good morning. Good morning. Um, you know, it's, it's cliche to hear a politician say, well, I've been talking to the voters, but obviously when you're running – People come up and they volunteer information, right. you know, as local residents. Uh, you'll you'll get used to that. Yeah. <laughs> also, when you're hosting a talk show, people well, yeah, that's up, true. Give <laughs> you suggestions very, too. Very, or, or any any public platform, I'll, <laughs> right. I'll vouch for that as well. Right. Yeah, for sure, for for a number of years. But you know, going downtown to to have dinner, it's it's quiet. It seems clean. It seems safe. Uh, a lot of local towns in our region can't lay that claim so right. there's a real positive there what are you hearing as far as other positive comments about the town what are you hearing as an overall theme that we need to get on this i think overall people are very happy with what's happening downtown honestly we've had so many new businesses new um you know the the uh, interwoven that's opening and the garage and uh, all the restaurants, we have a couple new places coming in, um, a new martini bar and another restaurant coming in. So there's some good things happening and people do love it. I, uh, uh, I don't hear anybody f 
say that they don't feel safe downtown. Mm -hmm. the, the thing that I've heard, I'll share what, what the mm -hmm. information I've heard is, uh, there's still some complaints about the drainage at, at the underpass there right. on Queen Street. And which they is, said after there was a lot a of work. Which is not road. Okay, yeah, so there yeah. you go. <laughs> the same way I'm assuming out in front of Lowe's and that disaster area, is that not city roads working on that? I don't believe that is okay. either. Yeah. No, that's, 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 that's state, state highway. highway. That's state yeah. highway, yeah. yeah. We need to get the state highway folks in here and well, roast them one day. Yeah. <laughs> roast them. Yeah, don't roast me. <laughs> there, no, no, not at all. The, that, it was poorly designed in the first place to well, give, sure. give state highway credit. They have uh, had several studies to see how they can improve it. And there have been some minor improvement but it's, you're right it's, it's still it's taking it, forever it's, and, and it's and a now, traffic jam i don't know if you were out there yeah. last night i drove over there yeah. and they have created two craters yeah. that you drive through and it seems like it knocks the front end out of yeah. your car so yeah uh, so, i've gotten so i avoided it all costs. well i mean yeah. i think that's what they're actually trying yeah. to do because there's so much congestion there it's like let's see how bad we can make it so glad that's not the city <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> it's not, not going to fall on your on your shoulders to yeah, take care yeah. of but what a disaster that is but picking up on that that theme mark uh heidi are there physical infrastructure needs that you think that we hope to address within your in your tenure well we definitely um the stormwater obviously that's got to mm. be changed that's um going to have to be uh, corrected and that's a process it, it's begun uh, in small steps but that'll that'll be continued um, the the sidewalks that mm -hmm. we're fixing now that's in the current budget to um, skim the, the sidewalks in Queen and King and um, so those those should be better um, but yeah we I think we just have to continue with what mm -hmm. we're doing uh, we're gonna have to work on parking obviously um, we'll get there, um, but yeah. How bad is the parking? I don't think it's bad. I I, I go down all the time and yeah, I don't have any trouble I've parking. I've never had any problem. Right, but I'm, it's what people complain about, yeah. so you have to address. Well, but what here's people. the bigger question then, Heidi. Why is there such a perception that parking is a problem? Anytime I've gone into Martinsburg to need what a you know get what you need, yeah. I've never had an issue with parking. I've right. always found something that's within a block or so right. of of where I'm going. And I don't regard that as a burden enough to block right. walk a block or so. So why is the well, perception Well, I've said such? this on the show before, that to me, walking a block or two is not a problem either. Um, and I think that's just different. People are used to being able to park right in front of, I mean, if, even if it's Walmart, you're still walking <laughs> to get inside. It's not so uncommon to have a 150-foot yeah. walk to yeah. get to the yeah. front right. doors of Walmart. For some reason, it feels different. Yeah. Um, but we have lots of parking lots down there. Um, on but, both sides yeah. of Queen Street. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. There's lots of parking lots. Maybe they're not um, visible. Maybe they're not known. Uh, maybe we need more signage to guide people to those. I don't know. But but there's definitely plenty of parking, uh, in my opinion. So in regards to sidewalks, this has been something that's been taken up by more than one candidate, and that is the ownership of the sidewalk goes to the uh, proprietor right. uh, or the city, the I city. guess. But as, as was pointed out, you go to the store, you buy the bag of cement, you mix it with the water, you put it on the ground to fix your sidewalk, and now it's done and now the city owns it. But yeah. when it breaks again, you own it. Right. Yeah, that's something odd. <laughs> that's <laughs> odd. But the city does seem to be taking over that. Right. Uh, that, uh, and Kevin talked about that. Yes, and, and I think that's a good thing. It'll, it'll help with the safety in the area, um, trip hazards and all that. So I think it's a good thing. It makes more sense, too. Yeah, it does. Right. It makes a lot more sense. And it's a lot less confusing. Yes. And if, and if the city takes care of the maintenance. And it'll be more it'll un uniform. Yes. It'll, it'll look better. Right. And when things look better, they are better. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, big picture goals for the city of Martinsburg over the next four years. Um, continuation of what they're working on, the Greenway Trail. Hopefully they'll get the raise, we, I say they, we, we'll get the raise grant um, by the end of this month, I guess we'll know that. Um, uh, continuing to bring new business businesses into the downtown area and, and through the entire city. Um, bring in, um, just improving the, the aesthetics of the buildings that are there. The whether owned or rented, uh, I do feel like that that definitely needs to be addressed because there's some some buildings and mm -hmm. and houses that that could use some. How would you address that? Because these are a lot privately owned. 
Correct. So what would you do? Well, I know uh, we own property. My dad owns property. We get notices whenever the grass isn't mowed. or um, So it may just be a matter of making sure that those, uh, those things are addressed. I know they're addressed on a small scale for me, for mm-hmm. my family's properties. So, um. A couple of years ago, it was not uncommon for there to be a lot of complaints about absentee landlords, uh, right. those who would live out of state but have property in downtown Martinsburg or anywhere in the city and, and, right. and don't tend to it. I don't hear those complaints as much. Right. Is it that people just got tired of complaining about it or has the problem been somewhat mitigated? I don't know. I don't know what it is or I don't know if it's a shortage of staff that are that are trying to do the job. I honestly don't know the answer to that. But it's something I would like to address because I, I do feel like um, the overall look of the city, it's going to mm-hmm. help the neighbor want to paint their house and keep their place looking better. Uh, you know, I think I think it'll help over overall. Do you hear as many complaints about it now? The the look of the Ab- the buildings? look absentee landlords problems with getting people to comply. The, I don't know about getting people to comply. I honestly don't know the answer to that. But for me, as I drive through the city, mm-hmm. I see an issue with some of it. Yes. Yeah. What would you? Oh, good, Mark. No, I was going to say you mentioned the trail, and I didn't yeah. want to let that get away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what a what a wonderful thing. Right. My wife and I have walked on it a number of times. My understanding, and, and let's make sure everybody in the community knows, is it will connect in with the trail that uh, runs along Route 9. Correct. And then you're going to extend it out to the area. Lake Thomas. Out to Lake Thomas. Mm-hmm. What's going on at Lake Thomas? There's another urban legend that uh, they're soon going to be, uh, you know, to take the real estate cliche, you know, affordable living on a lakefront property. It's not a lake, it's a quarry, right. but, <laughs> yeah. but what's going and on And I, I don't know about the future of, uh-huh. of Lake Thomas. I know that they're planning for it to be a recreational area. I don't know about the, the other future plans for it. So, um, but I... I I look forward to it. Who owns Lake Thomas? Is that city? I believe that's a city owned. So then there'd be some restriction of what you can build around there. Yeah, Yeah. I would think. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I only know of the recreational side of it Mm -hmm. that I've heard. Mm -hmm. And that's all I've heard. Yeah, that's all I had heard. So Mm -hmm. I don't know the the rest. Yeah, I don't. But more recently, people have talked about homes being built there and developed. And gotcha. Yeah. So again, you know, urban legends. Yeah. you're here from the city. So there, there's your homework. Go, yeah. Uh, <laughs> find go, out and go forth and, let, and <laughs> let, find out and let, let yeah. us know. Okay, I yeah. will. Well, I'd heard there was a sea monster in there. Yeah, oh, I did. There you did go. Yeah, they said there was. Uh, yeah. I'll I heard look into that, that, that as too. well. Locke right. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> and was sent directly from Scotland. Yeah, yeah. there you go. So they say. <laughs> so they say. But it only comes out Halloween night, Bill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the Roundhouse. How much involvement have you had with the Roundhouse already in your life? Not and. Much. Do you have uh, an idea of what you'd like to see that become going forward? Uh, I don't have much experience with it. Um, I'm on Main Street, so we've had a few events there. Sometimes when when it would rain and we have uh, an event downtown, we'd hold them. They'd let us hold them down there. Um, But I honestly don't know. I've heard a lot of things that they're planning um, uh, uh, an area for uh, concerts and and, uh, Mm -hmm. an event venue, all those things that are in the works. Um, I know they just finished an elevator or something on on the one side that has a banquet room, but I've not been in it, so I don't know. I don't know much about it. Yeah, the, with the roundhouse, Rob, people are, are impatient that this m- marvelous structure is not being fully utilized. But if you look back in time, they the it required a lot of work, a lot mm-hmm. of oh, yeah. structural work to make it safe. And right. it does not show. It's not the cosmetic. Right. And so I think there's been good progress, slow progress, maybe not as fast as one would like. But uh, the the dollars they've had, I right. think they've been well utilized for the roundhouse. And there's, there's a lot of different hands in that stew uh, as well. It's Over not, the, not exactly just the right. city, yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, Heidi, keeping in mind that you are not yet a city council person. You're council yes. at large elect. elect. June 27, a week from tomorrow, you're sworn in. It, however... A caller has asked if you know why Ray Street is in poor condition between Queen and Raleigh Streets. I do not know the answer to that, and I, I assume they mean the Street Street. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't think it was. I drive that every day, but I don't know. I know uh, there's a little dip right there at Raleigh and and Race, but other than that, I don't. Not as I don't, big as the dip out in front. I know, of right? Of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know the answer. I know that the, the streets are one of those things that they have to continue to pave. It's as soon as you finish this one, you got to go back to where you started, and it's a it's a constantly revolving process. 
Um, but I guess I'd have to look and see what they may be referring to because I don't know. Second piece of homework for you. There you me, go. I, I got some homework. All right. Uh, and, and then uh, in regards to a West Side fire station, that came in from David Anderson, who was one right. of the four council at large candidates. Right. Your thoughts on that? I think a feasibility study should definitely be done. And then if it's needed, then we just have to figure out how to how to budget for for uh, staffing it. And and do we have are they already short staffed where they are and how, how are we going to staff that? How familiar have you become with the city's budget at this point? I uh, received the budget. I went and met with uh, Andy Blake when I first decided to run, and he provided me the budget. And it's a it's a thing. It's a <laughs> lot, <laughs> but um, but I, I um, am learning. So I'm not that familiar, but I've tried to become more familiar with it. But so. your uh, city's physically sound. You're in good shape budget-wise. Yes, yes. Uh, Martinsburg From, always has been. So, Yeah. Bill, your first time being elected on a bigger scale than, uh, than maybe high school government was as a county commissioner. Correct. This is Heidi's first time being elected. What are some things that she needs to know that she doesn't even know about just yet? I don't mean the specifics of the office, but I mean about being an elected official. Well, doing exactly what she's doing right now to listen, to listen. Listen to the people that have been there. Listen to your fellow council members. Listen to the folks. And, um, and if you listen, you'll, you'll do the right things. Good, good, good. Sound uh, advice? And I Sounds would say... Good coming from television and radio right. background, I would say always be willing to address whatever issues mm -hmm. or concerns are out there. And right. even, you know, an answer of saying, I don't know, yeah. I'll go find out. Right. That's acceptable, yeah. you know. We all need to go find out. Yeah. But to be, coming back, to a, a specific aspect of that is the budget. You as a city council has, will be, you should know the budget well. Mm -hmm. You right. should know the budget for all the implications of it. This is probably the most difficult part of any elected official's job is to have a fully full grasp of the physical situation. Right, so. right. And, and that's one of the things Corey said is uh, as they receive their packet each month, yeah. because before the meeting yeah. they get it like a week ahead, I guess, is reviewing that and comparing it to the current budget. And so, uh, yeah, it'll be a learning process yeah. for sure. Yeah. Heidi, we have about uh, a minute left, and that final minute is yours. What would you like to say to our listeners who live within the city limits of Martinsburg? Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to uh, serve on city council. I look forward to it. I'm, um, I'm a little intimidated because I am filling some big shoes, but uh, I told Corey he'd probably hear from me again. We'd be having lunch to get more mm -hmm. advice because uh, I, I definitely don't, don't feel like I know uh, what I'm doing yet, but I'm, I'm going to do my best to do what's best for the city, and I think that's what this job is about. That's a, probably the best thing you could say. If you came in here thinking you knew all the answers, yeah. you'd be doomed to fail. Right. Yeah. Or, you, or you'd be a co-host. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Heidi, have a, have a great day. Thank you so much. <laughs> Heidi Crawford, uh, winner of the two at uh, one of the two at-large seats available for the city council 